Uh, my name is uh, Neil Miller. I'm a private landowner, former uh, uh, business executive and management consultant. Specialized in mathematical model building, by the way, and your protocol sucks. <laughs> um, I, I'm seeing this as an exercise in uh, placating the public and diverting attention from the real issue. Your opening remarks, I felt like I was in third grade. <laughs> You're dealing with an intelligent audience here, that's why there's such a large attendance. These people know a lot more than you do about this issue, and you treat them like little children. Um, the real issue here, in the 70s, this very area was decimated with spraying of poisons. There was a huge movement underway, which ended up in a, in a federal uh, uh, restriction, temporary restraining order on spraying, because of all the health impacts. There was a book written on this called The Bitter Fog, which I'm sure everyone here is aware of. Here we are 30 years later talking about the same damn thing. These people at Monsanto and these chemical companies are not stupid. They have dozens of chemicals in their laboratories that once you deal, if you do, and I have no confidence you will, deal with atrazine and, and the uh, 2D4, um, they're ready to put those things on the market. This is an endless process. Ten years from now, we're going to be back talking about the same issue. Now, I had a discussion with the chief forester of Justina Lumber that owns 500 acres across the road from mine. And he's explaining to me, being from another state, what their, what their procedure is. It's the clear cut, <coughs> spray, replant, spray again, and hope that they get a crop. He admitted to me that sometimes it takes two and three times to get the timber to grow in, the, in some of these areas here. So I pointed across the road, I have 135 acres. I do selective cutting. I never have to spray. I never have to replant. And I said, you know, as a business model, this makes no sense to me why you would be spending all this money to accomplish the same thing I accomplished for zero expenditures. He said, end of conversation. That's our way of doing it, and that's it. There is your issue. Until you can change the Forestry Act to allow people to grow timber without all these chemicals, this problem is never going to go away. It's just going to continue. And like I said, we'll be back here 10, 15, 20 years from now with the same issues. These people are sick. Some of them have died from these chemicals. And I have, you know, talk about confidence level in this group accomplishing anything. You've just diverted a lot of attention away from the real issue. My name is Audrey Moore. Um, I'm from Selma, Oregon, the Illinois Valley. We're in the same boat. We're in a we're in a bowl. The foresters are spraying on mountaintops. We're in the bottom, the base of it, and we're sick. The problem is, we get to pay for these notifications from the ODF that tell us what they're going to spray and when, which is a joke. My latest one has 11 chemicals on the list, and it's going to happen sometime between now and the end of the year. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but I can't afford to test for 11 chemicals, especially when I don't even know when they're going to hit, when they're going to be sprayed in my neighborhood. So that is the first issue I want this team to realize. What's happening legally with this kind of crap has to stop. Right. I want to know what's going to be sprayed, when it's going to be sprayed, period. That's my right. private land, that apparently is legal, no problem other than chemical trespass, but let's assume everything's fine. 
at least let me know what you're going to do and when so I can leave the area if I happen to be sick. I'm sick. Many of the people in my valley are sick. Yesterday I was in bed. Why I'm standing here I don't know other than I'm so upset and so frustrated and I've only been doing this since February. This is new to me. I had no idea I retired in a chemical toxic dump. Yeah. Next, advice. Put the dye back. One of my friends who just recently found out about this, when she first moved up to our valley, she had a uh, clear cut next to her property. They brought in the helicopter and they sprayed the hell out of everything and it was red. And the dye was all over her land. But she got to see it. Unfortunately, she had no idea what she was looking at. If the dye was in it, it would save you folks a whole lot of time, effort, and money because you would see the drift as it's happening. The other thing I want to ask is, what, what's kind of confusing here is listening to the earnest, I think, efforts putting forth by some of you under the constraints of the departments you work with, which are playing games with us and we all know it. Um, the issue, oh, excuse me a second, let me try to read what I've written. We're being told that if, if the products, the chemicals are being used by label instructions and everyone's following all the right protocols, etc., <laughs> that everything should be fine and dandy. The problem being out of the at least 80,000 chemicals being used in our nation, they're not tested at all. 200 have been really tested, field tested, okay? 200 out of the 80,000, I could be off with a few hundred here or there, but let's get real. They're not actually tested. There's not actual field studies that are being done that are in, in the application of how they're being used in our neighborhoods. That has to be done. So for you to stand here and say, as long as we follow these protocols and the label instructions, everybody's fine, is, is a blatant lie. We don't know what's happening when the chemicals are actually used because they're not being studied in the field of study. And those studies, by the way, I was at the 429 ODF meeting, April 29th of this year, where we were supposed to be able to get our, our side of the story presented, which I won't even go there read the script. But um, I heard a gentleman representing the college up there who was trying to present the facts on the, on the, present, on the, on the study by Syngenta. It showed 1980 Syngenta study on atrazine. Hello, they manufacture Syngenta. Do you really believe this study? And that chemical that we're told is prolifically used in our state, that chemical is banned in Europe. To be politically correct, they don't allow it to be used because it is so toxic in water. When it gets in, you can't get it out. So the point is I'm trying to get it is we need to figure out how if you're going to tell us that everything's hunky-dory if they're used according to the proper application. I want to know where are the studies that say they're safe and why aren't they being paid for and how do I as a citizen that knows I'm sick along with all of my neighbors, how do I afford to get tested? How do I afford to get tested? The spray needs to stop. Mm.